Hello, friends. Today, let's solve the partition equal subset sum problem. Let's first see a statement. Given a non-empty array containing only positive integers, find if the array can be partitioned into two subsets such that the sum of elements in both subsets is equal. Let's see the example. If we are given 1, 5, 11, 5, <clears throat> We can partition this array into 1, 5, 5, and 11, so we return 2. So from this example, we know that uh, these two subsets not necessarily be subarray. We can use the index 0, 1, and 3. So um, uh, that's a hint. And uh, let's see the example 2. We are given 1, 2, 3, 5. We cannot partition this array into two uh, equal sum subsets. How can we quickly know the fact? Because if we sum up these four elements, we can get 11. 11 divided to not equal to 0. Uh, sorry, 11 module 2 not equal to 0. Because all the elements should be positive integers, we can simply return false. So this question becomes to that we are given array, we need to find some elements in this array that sum up equal to the total sum of these arrays uh, divided to. Like if this sum equal to all the elements uh, in the numbers array, the problem becomes we need to find whether we can pick some elements uh, in these numbers to get some divide to, right? How can we find uh, this fact? Basically, you can think out uh, to use backtracking because we can start uh, from every index of these numbers and try to uh, sum up other elements uh, and uh, to see whether we can get the sum over 2. This is one solution. Another solution is dynamic program because this question is similar to uh, 0, 1, knapsack problem. 0, 1, uh, knapsack, knapsack problem. Because for every, because we need to find a subset, right? So for every element in the numbers, we can pick it or not pick it. So uh, simply DP, I means whether we can, whether we can sum up uh, I from the numbers array. So um, these are our two solutions. And now I will first uh, solve this problem uh, using backtracking. So first, uh, as I said before, we need to sum up this, uh, all the elements in the numbers. So for every number in the numbers, we will sum up it and do a quick check. If this sum module 2 not equal to 0, we return false. And then we just simply let this sum divide 2. Because this is our new target, we need to find whether some elements can sum up to this target. And uh, because it's backtracking, usually we will call another function. I just name it help function. And let's implement this help function. We will return a boolean. And then uh, we need definitely need to parse these numbers. And we need to parse index because we can start from each index to find uh, whether some elements can sum up to the target. Yes, we need also need a target. So the base case should be because we do not uh, necessary to sum up, we just uh, minus that from this target. So the base case should be if the target uh, equal to zero, we return true. But we also need to find some false uh, cases. When the index reaches the end equal to the numbers dot length, 
or the target less than zero because we minus it, right? So when it's less than zero, we cannot uh, find the, the correct answer. We will uh, return the false. But as this, we only need to find one valid uh, partition. So if the helper, if helper numbers index plus one, and the targets minus numbers index. If we have find one solution, we return true. We do not need every uh, everyone to be true. If one is true, we just return true. But if not true, we, we need to change the start index, right? But the problem that we may meet the time uh, limited uh, X uh time limit exceed 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 the problem. Like see this example. If it's one 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 da, 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 all the one and the uh, one hundred. Because when we try the first one, we cannot find the, the val uh, valid answer. We will usually we will try the next one. But basically, if the first one we cannot find the find the answer we cannot find either so we we need to skip the same skip the same elements that's the reason we do this part the next start index should be um, index plus one right but if this j uh, we should always make sure this j is valid so j less than the numbers length and the numbers index equal to numbers j. If they are equal, we should skip it. So we just let j plus plus. And we just return the helper and numbers and the, that will be j. And uh, this should also be targeted because we just change a start index, not uh, uh, an element. So it's also be the target. Let's fill this part. That should be the numbers and the start index zero. And the target should be the sum. Okay. Okay, so it's very fast as you can see. So now let's uh, so, uh, solve it by the dynamic programming. Okay, this part is the same, right? Okay, and then we will use a Boolean array. That means whether we can sum, uh, we can sum up uh, two i from the numbers array. <clears throat> so the size should be the sum plus one because we can pick none of these elements in this array. So dp0 should be true. And then for every number in the numbers array, we will try to pick it or not pick it. So we should start from the sum, right? Uh, no, j equal to sum. And j greater or equal than 0, j minus minus. Once this uh, j greater than, you should uh, Pay attention to that. We should add this equal if equal the number, and the dpj will equal to j, which means we did uh, we done we don't pick this number, and the dpj minus number, which means we pick this number. Uh, the reason that we should uh, contains this equal because uh, only dp zero is true at first, so. When they are equal, we can get uh, uh, the j equal uh, to true. Like uh, at first, only dp0 is true. And then when we go to this one, and uh, when they are equal, we know dp1 is true. So, so on, so forth. And finally, we just return dp sum, which means whether we can sum up to this sum. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.